The Bridge, translated by Richard Stokes. I was stiff and cold. I was a bridge. I lay across an abyss. My toes dug deep on one side, my hands on the other, and I had sunk my teeth into crumbling clay. The tails of my coat fluttered at my sides. The icy trout stream roared below me. No tourist strayed to these rugged heights. The bridge was not yet marked on any map. Thus I lay and waited. I had to wait. Without collapsing, no bridge, once erected, can cease to be a bridge. Once, toward evening, whether it was the first or thousandth, I cannot tell. My thoughts were always confused and always going round in circles. Towards the evening in the summer, with the roar of the stream now deeper, I heard human footsteps. Come to me, to me. Stretch yourself, bridge. Prepare yourself. Gird her without rail. Bear the one entrusted to you. Steady unobtrusively his uncertain steps. But if he stumbles, show your mettle, and like a mountain god hurl him to the other side. He came. He tapped me with the iron spike of his stick, with which he then lifted my coattails and folded them about me. He plunged his spike into my bushy hair and let it rest there for quite some time, doubtlessly gazing all around him. But then, I was just following him in reverie over mountain and valley. He jumped with both feet onto the middle of my body. I shuddered with wild pain, utterly uncomprehending. Who was it? A child? A gymnast? A daredevil? A suicide? A tempter? An annihilator? And I turned over to look at him. A bridge turns over. I had not yet fully turned when I began to fall. I fell, and in a moment I was ripped apart and impaled on the sharp stones that had always gazed up so peacefully at me out of the raging waters.